Atrial fibrillation. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? Let's take a closer look. Your heart is the pump that circulates blood throughout your body. Every heartbeat is triggered by an electrical signal, like an orchestra's conductor, making sure the rhythm is steady and the pace is right. This conductor is known as your heart's sinus node, or SA node for short. It's the natural pacemaker that stimulates your heartbeat. From its headquarters in the heart's right atrium, the SA node sends signals to the atrioventricular, or AV node, and then to the ventricles. Atrial fibrillation, AF, or AFib as it's sometimes known, basically means that conflicting electrical signals are being sent from other places in the heart's atria. Like an orchestra with more than one conductor, the result is chaos. The rhythm becomes irregular and the heart starts beating faster. Most people with atrial fibrillation experience heart palpitations or an accelerated heartbeat, which can cause discomfort. Others may suffer from chronic fatigue, shortness of breath, or dizziness. Strange as it may seem, some people won't experience any symptoms at all. They may only discover that they have AF during a routine checkup. These episodes can vary considerably in length. Some people have heart palpitations that last only a very short time, from a few minutes to a few hours, and then go away on their own. This is called paroxysmal AF. Others have what is known as persistent AF, AF that lasts for more than a week at a time and doesn't go away on its own. Medical treatment may be necessary to bring the heartbeat back to normal. There is another chronic form known as permanent AF. This is when AF has been present for a long time and it is no longer possible or desirable to get the heartbeat back to normal. As we age, the risk of developing atrial fibrillation increases. But AF, which is the most common irregular heart rhythm, can also affect young adults, even healthy ones. Many conditions can lead to AF. The most common is high blood pressure, also known as hypertension. Others include heart valve problems, hyperthyroidism, and heart failure, which means the heart can no longer pump blood effectively. Drinking alcohol, especially in large quantities, can also trigger AF. But sometimes, there is no obvious cause of AF. While atrial fibrillation is not necessarily dangerous, it does pose a substantial risk of stroke, also known as a cerebrovascular accident, or CVA. This risk is especially acute for people who have other risk factors like high blood pressure, diabetes, heart failure, old age, or especially if you've had one or more previous strokes. Because AF causes an irregular heartbeat, blood circulation in the atria is impaired. This can lead to blood clots. If the clot moves to the brain, it can trigger a stroke. Part of the brain is then deprived of blood, which can cause severe damage. Familiarize yourself with the signs of a stroke. Loss of strength, feeling or use of an arm, use of a leg, or part of the face, for example, a crooked smile. Difficulty speaking. Difficulty understanding what people say. Impaired vision. Loss of balance. If you suddenly experience any of these symptoms, don't wait. Go to the emergency room right away. Okay, you've been diagnosed with AF. Now what? Treatment for AF has two main goals. Reducing the risk of a stroke and treating symptoms to improve quality of life. If you are at risk of a stroke and depending on your health needs, your doctor will prescribe anticoagulant or antiplatelet medication, which thin your blood. If AF symptoms are causing you discomfort, you can take antiarrhythmic drugs, which help maintain a regular heartbeat. Other medications can be prescribed to slow down your heartbeat. It often takes several tries to find the medication that's right for you. And though you may be tempted to stop taking your drugs as soon as you feel better, bear in mind that they are designed to reduce long-term health risks, so it's critical to keep taking your medication. What if your condition doesn't improve? What are the other options? 
electrical cardio version. This is essentially a short electric shock to the chest that resets your heartbeat back to the right rhythm. You will be given an anesthetic beforehand, so this is a painless process. If the previous treatments don't work, you may be recommended for a procedure called AF ablation. This procedure, performed under anesthesia, involves burning the tissue responsible for AF. However, ablation is not right for every patient, and its purpose is simply to improve quality of life. Finally, an artificial pacemaker can be implanted and an AV node ablation performed. The AV node is the command center for the electrical impulses between the atria and ventricles. By eliminating the node, your heart will stop sending signals, both good and bad, and the artificial pacemaker will take its place, controlling your heartbeat permanently. What's the take-home message? If you think you are experiencing symptoms of atrial fibrillation, don't wait. Consult a healthcare professional immediately. Treating AF is essential to reducing the risk of a stroke and improving your quality of life. Don't forget that strokes are the number one complication associated with AF. Your risk of a stroke increases with age. Atrial fibrillation is responsible for one-third of strokes in people over 60. And remember, medical treatment can't take the place of a healthy lifestyle. Good habits are essential to reducing the risk factors associated with atrial fibrillation. It's your health. It's your responsibility.